Deep in the great trenches of pop culture history lies a dead vessel known as Saturday Morning Cartoons. These used to be shows created specifically for airing on the big three networks for children to enjoy when they had a day off from school and church. Of course, the history of Saturday Morning Cartoons goes back as far as the early 1950s, but it was flourishing well into the early 2000s, even with the advent of bigger cable networks like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. Speaking of Disney, what I want to specifically talk about today was a great programming block from the late 90s called One Saturday Morning. This was a block that ran from 1997 to 2002, which was later replaced by ABC Kids that ran until 2011. I want to talk about this because in the age of constant nostalgia grabbing BuzzFeed articles and Facebook posts titled, Do You Remember This? I'm surprised by how little there is about this amazing tiny period of TV history. It's probably because it ran so short and was later turned into Disney Channel mini marathon of their own programming, but it was honestly pretty great when it first started, but then died a slow death. The real question is, what happened? Well, it all started in 1996 when the FCC took an earlier mandate from 1990 to increase the educational and informational programming being broadcast to children on their weekends off. Yeah, you know that little EI thing that's in the corner of kids shows that air on NBC, CBS, and PBS? Well, that means that the current programming fulfills the mandate. This was something that the big networks and individual transitors had to cover, otherwise they'd be fined. That didn't put a death to shows entirely. Things like Discovery Kids and WB Kids survived by arguing that their shows had good morals to support an educational physique. So Disney was bold enough to create an entire block of original animation on their own ABC network to take care of this mandate rather than rely on first run syndicated programming from other companies. They got the help of Peter Hastings, a writer for Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain, who came up with the idea of a block that had characters in the building representing presenting the so powerful day of Saturday. Several shows were created like Recess, Pepper Ann, 101 Dalmatians, Science Court, and Doug, which had been acquired from Nickelodeon. They even continued to air Disney-owned shows like The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and the WB-owned Bugs Bunny and Tweety show, a compilation of Looney Tunes shorts due to their high ratings until the contract with Warner Brothers ended in 2000. If you watch the Little Mermaid VHS, you can actually find a pretty fun commercial promoting the new block. Disney's One Saturday Morning on ABC, with brand spanking new Doug, Pepper Ann, and Recess. Recess was always my favorite subject in the school. Word problem. And the block was a pretty big hit from the start. There really wasn't anything airing on any other network that had simply comedic shows that had good moral characters. Everything else seemed to be action or anime based. And here came Disney with that masterful work of vertical integration. It was so powerful that the spin-off was made for UPN called Disney's 1-2 which featured a lot of the same great animated shows. I was pretty young when the block first started, so I didn't experience the times when they actually had a host named Mimi, an elephant played by Brad Garrett, and other types of characters. There were many programs like Mrs. Munger's Class, How Things Work, Manny the Uncanny, and Great Minds Think for Themselves, which actually had Robin Williams reprising his role as the genie. Back on the air with the Physics Friends Network. Toledo? Yeah, uh, can you... Give me an example of uh, relativity. Why, sure. A particle of light leaves the sun at the same time a spaceship also leaves the sun. The spaceship rockets off at speeds close to the speed of light. If an observer on the sun... Oh, ow, ow. Truthfully, I was about two years old when the block started. When it reached its later years, things like the storylines involving the live-action characters and hosts and mini-segments were dropped as the ratings began to dwindle. It wasn't cost effective to do that kind of stuff when they could just air the TV shows themselves without any of the announcers or hosts. By 2000, they had enough episodes produced to survive on the TV shows alone, but surprisingly, even though the live action stuff was dropped, new animated shows kept being produced like Hercules, Mickey Mouse Works, The Weekenders, Teacher's Pet, Buzz Lightyear A Star Command, Lloyd in Space, House of Mouse, Mary Kate and Ashley in Action. What? the 
Tino, and Timo Supremo. Some of these shows were so popular that they got their own films, like Doug's First Movie, Teacher's Pet, and Recess School's Out, a personal favorite of mine. Yet, yeah, Recess was actually a pretty damn popular show, and it would survive the longest of all these shows, even into the transition from One Saturday Morning to ABC Kids. The later years of the block were some of my earlier memories. Most of the live action stuff was replaced with bumpers of kids playing outside, I guess. Probably what kids should be doing instead of watching TV on a weekend. In the last two years of the block, Lizzie McGuire and even Stevens aired to promote Zoog Disney, a block of shows aimed at older kids, but it was Disney testing the waters for their next plan. You see, during this time, Disney actually purchased Fox Family, which became ABC Family, which of course later became known as Freeform. In the process, they also got the rights to Power Rangers. Seeing the cash cow that Power Rangers could be due to its popularity and relatively low budget, but not really fitting into their block of fun animated kids shows, and with Lizzie McGuire and even Stevens doing so well in the block, the decision was made to completely rebrand the block as ABC Kids. Disney would do a smart economic decision by just taking reruns from Disney Channel programming that could be argued as educational and they would throw it on ABC while producing new episodes of the flagship show Power Rangers. Now many 90s kids will say that this was the absolute death of great TV, but I'm gonna go a little on the defensive. When I first saw the ads for the new block, I was hyped. Getting Disney Channel shows when you didn't even have cable was a dream come true. Things like Proud Family, Kim Possible with even Stevens and Lizzie McGuire sticking around, as well as Recess, I mean, who couldn't love that? The early days of One Saturday Morning were long gone. Most of the shows had disappeared and would often show up on Toon Disney, but Recess still stuck around, being easily the best show. Even a new show specifically for the block was created called Fillmore, a really awesome middle school detective show that's gone completely forgotten. In fact, that might be worth doing a video on someday. So when people often complain about ABC Kids, I think it's simply because original programming wasn't being made anymore. I still enjoyed it because I went without Disney Channel my entire life, so it was nice seeing all these shows, but the complaints were noteworthy. Ratings slowly dwindled as the block went on, but things like Power Rangers kept it alive as they kept producing new seasons up until 2009. Or you could watch NBA Inside Stuff! Originally the setting of the block was in a baseball stadium, which later became a rock stadium. And that cool light bulb EI logo illuminating television. Uh, it eventually got replaced by a typical EI logo with a graduation cap on, yeah. Great shows like Lilo and Stitch series, Phil of the Future, and the other popular ones like That's So Raven, The Buzz on Maggie, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, The Emperor's New School, The Replacements, and Hannah Montana all eventually found a place on the block. So with Disney basically having this block for super cheap and using it to air Power Rangers and reruns of Disney Channel shows, well, what happened? Well, obviously as time went on, I altogether liked the shows less and less, but I would still come to watch The Block anyway. I was never a Power Rangers fan, but I knew of its popularity. As The Block aged, the time it started out got a little later and later. Kids couldn't watch The Block simply because it aired too late for them to catch it. Other things like cable, of course, and the internet killed it, but even when it died in 2011, internet and internet video weren't so huge. I mean, Netflix was only just starting with their whole video on demand stuff. I don't think younger kids were entirely using the internet by 2011 and distracting them from TV. I'll give you what I truly think happened. So every year Disney would do what it could to update the block and put new shows on it, and in 2006 the lineup was The Emperor's New School, The Replacements, two episodes of That's So Raven, Hannah Montana, Zack and Cody, and then the newest season of Power Rangers. Why do I know this by heart? Because they would keep that same lineup for five years straight, and with the exception of Power Rangers, they didn't even update the episodes. It was usually the same 10 episodes in circulation, and by the time the block died, 
all the shows have long been cancelled on Disney Channel, ABC Kids became a graveyard for repeated episodes of the same thing. This, I'm sure, turned people away from the block and brought no new viewers in, and as Power Rangers sat at the latest time available of 12pm, when most kids were probably headed to other people's houses or sports games, uh, its ratings fell. Power Rangers is still a popular franchise, so it's not like people didn't watch it, but having to sit through three hours of the same exact crap every single weekend could get a little tiring. Eventually, Disney was really scraping the bottom of the barrel. To get the nostalgia crowd, in 2010, they stopped producing new episodes of Power Rangers, which was cheap to begin with, and just re-released the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from the 90s with new effects. How low can you go? Apparently, Saban ended up negotiating with Disney to buy the rights back, a rare occurrence where Disney actually gave up one of its properties, and they brought it to Nickelodeon, where it's been kind of popular again, and they released a new feature film that people kinda saw and kind of liked. So in 2011, with Power Rangers gone, Disney was left with five shows that were not only dead, but they didn't even have a wide variety of episodes. ABC had gotten lazy with covering the mandate, and while I have heard constant rumors of a revamping and bringing new Disney Channel shows to the network, hope was dying when other stations began to replace their own programming blocks with a thing called Litton Entertainment documentary styled shows. They were taking control of almost every Every block because uh, their shows were cheap and they covered the stupid federal mandate from the government. It was announced that the same would happen to ABC and on August 27, 2011, ABC Kids aired for a final time, the first time the station would go without Saturday animation in almost 50 years and ended 15 years of history for the network and it didn't even go off with a bang. I actually did watch the final broadcast and guess what? It was all episodes I had seen on the block probably 20 times. At this point, I probably have several Hannah Montana episodes memorized by heart. I don't think Saturday morning cartoons will be returning anytime soon. The government made it difficult for the networks to deal with the mandates. While cable networks boomed, being able to air kids programming throughout the whole week, and Saturday mornings became days to go to elementary sports games, or to go outside, or go on the internet, or do video games, or go on Netflix. There's so many other options now that trying to finance a network cartoon is too expensive. It makes sense that one Saturday morning's intent to create original programming ended, but ABC Kids just died a slow death. Now with the prevalence of YouTube and Netflix, the best thing you can do is find a TV show to stream, and if you want, yeah, just pause it and then watch a compilation of commercials on YouTube because, hey, that was the best reason to watch anything on Saturday, right? The commercials. Commercials are always great. <laughs> Other than that, one Saturday morning in ABC Kids should be commended for what they did. They fought the best they could against the federal mandate and cable networks, and we got out of it some of the best programming ever, like Teacher's Pet, Pepper Ann, and to me, the most important thing was Recess. With 90s nostalgia on the rise, and with One Saturday Morning now being like 20 years old, I'm surprised that Disney really hasn't done much to acknowledge it. There's not really t-shirts or even anything like that to buy, and only time will tell if they will ever acknowledge it. It was such a brief period of TV history, but if you're like me, you'd know that there was only one Saturday morning. Also, not kidding. The Disney one Saturday morning website <laughs> still works to this day. And, it, and if you look at this, it's, it's promoting Fillmore and it's promoting that ABC Kids will be coming soon. The ABC Kids website doesn't work anymore, but this still is up for some reason. You can play some of the games still. I don't believe it. Also, what is one magnificent morning. That ain't one Saturday morning. Disney ought to sue.